Did you know that the difference between winning and losing on your forehand is how you finish depending on where you stand? Think about that. Let's get into that lesson right now. My name is Jeff Salzenstein. I'm the founder of Tennis Evolution, one of the leading online tennis instruction websites in the world. So passionate about helping players just like you get to the next level. And we want to give you the tips and tricks that I learned from my 11 year professional playing career and over a decade of coaching online and offline, really trying to break it down for you so that you can have simple cues that you can focus on to help you get to the next level. And in today's lesson, we're going to talk about the forehand, specifically, how you can adjust your follow through depending on where you're standing in the court. It's a very simple tip, something that I don't really hear a lot of players talk about. And so what I wanna do right now is I'm gonna go back to the baseline and I'm gonna show you the nuances of the forehand that can give you clarity right away. And before I do that, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We have a lot of people watching these videos and they're not even subscribed. Are you one of them? So subscribe. Turn on your notifications so we can update you on all the latest releases and make sure you give us a thumbs up. Let's get to that lesson right now to help you with your forehand. I see a lot of players struggle with their forehands because they're actually using the wrong follow through in specific places in the court. What do I mean by that? Well, when I see players that are behind the baseline, let's say three feet behind the baseline, I see a lot of players still swinging across their body and finishing by their shoulder or below their shoulder. And unless you're very advanced and you know what you're doing out on the court like a, like a pro, like an adult type, you don't wanna mess with a follow through down here when you're behind the baseline. Heck, even Nadal doesn't do it. Nadal uses the buggy whip. So when you're behind the baseline, the simple cue is for you to finish over your shoulder or above your head. So anytime I'm working with a student and they're behind the baseline on their forehand, it's over the shoulder. If you study Djokovic closely, when he's running across the court, he's behind the baseline, it's over the shoulder. That helps with extension, that helps with elevation of the ball because you have to swing more low to high if you go over the shoulder. I'd rather have you miss that ball deep and long than in the net. And too many players are swinging here. Very simple cue. You can even use the buggy whip where you go up. If you go up with your hand, what does the ball do, right? If you go up with your hand, what does the ball do? It goes up. Now, if you do the buggy whip inefficiently, all bets are off. You're not a tennis evolution guy or gal if you do the buggy whip like this. We don't teach that over here. We teach the buggy whip where we go up and we go more across and over the head like this. Behind the baseline, over the shoulder. Now, as soon as you get inside the baseline or on top of the baseline, especially if you want to go down the line, right? So if you're behind the baseline, more often you're going to go cross court. You can still go down the line. You can go high down the line. I love that play. But as soon as you get here, now you might be in a position to attack. And I see too many players getting here, going over the shoulder and missing long, two or three feet long. Now, there are still pros that finish over the shoulder just inside the baseline, and they rip forehands. Great, don't change. If you're one of those players, don't change. I'm not about having you do it one way or the other way. I want you to do the way that works for you. I'm here to give you solutions. I'm here to share with you the problems I've seen over the years with players and how we can fix them right away. And you get to go out and try it. But what I have seen is that players are on the baseline or inside the baseline and they miss long. They sometimes even miss in the net because when they go over the shoulder, they hit the ball too flat. So when they're on the baseline, they want to drive through the ball, they hit the ball too flat and it goes in the net. So it either goes long or the net because the shape of the shot is straight like this. It doesn't have shape like this where the ball drops off a shelf. It goes up and then down. That extra rotation, that extra spin. 
So I always help my players, and this is what worked for me, when I'm inside the baseline, I am going to turn my hand and finish lower. See where my finish went there? It went below my shoulder at the end. And what I'm doing is I'm aiming just past the service line so there's no risk of missing ball. I aim just past the service line and now the ball will land deeper than that but it won't go long. So look at the difference in the swing path. I'm inside the baseline or on the baseline. I get that ball to go up and down like that. I like catching the racket. Look how you can even finish down in your pocket like this. Now you're going to get in trouble if you try to do this and you don't extend first. If you just flip over like that, good luck. The ball could fly, the ball could dump in the net, it can do anything because there isn't enough uh, ball control and extension. So make sure you go out and around and then down. Out and around and down. That actually went too high. <sighs> okay? change in technique. We change our technique on the forehand depending on where we are in the court. It's not just one forehand all the time. Your base forehand, of course, you're going to go over the shoulder. So let's say I'm playing a point. I get a ball here, over the shoulder. I get my depth cross court. I see, I recover to here. I see the ball is short and I can cut the angle. I come here and I finish low. If, that, not, not, if that's not working for you, the ball's going in the net or it's flying, you can come here and buggy whip it down the line a la Nadal. There's a reason Nadal does that because he can, get, he can get the ball to drop. He can get the ball to get up and down with this swing. This swing right here is the same as finishing across the body. If I go here and then I just come down like this, it's the same swing. I'm turning the hand like this. I'm turning the hand and the forearm over. Here, here. That's when you're in this part of the court. If you have a continental grip, don't do this. If you have an eastern grip, it could be a little bit harder, but you can still do it. You can still do it. The rule of thumb behind the baseline, up over the shoulder, buggy whip, buggy whip. Okay, or over the shoulder. Inside the baseline, up and down. Up and down. That is what's going to help you get to the next level. That's the type of forehand that you can learn to hit. So imagine, you're playing a match and you know that when you're behind the baseline, all you have to do is go over the shoulder or above your head. And when you're inside the baseline, all you have to do is turn the hand and you can develop those skills over time. Remember, if you're doing this and the ball's still flying or going in the net, you don't have the control, you need a little more extension and you might even wanna try a few buggy whips. Okay, there's a reason why the buggy whip works and the pros are using it. As a club player, you can use it as well as long as you do it correctly. I see a lot of players trying to use the buggy whip now, they're not doing it efficiently, the way that I teach it. So, of course, quick reminder, over the shoulder, behind the baseline, Finish lower, turn the hand when you're, behind, when you're inside the baseline or on the baseline. I hope you enjoyed this lesson today. If you want to take the next step in the journey to work with me, all you have to do is click the link below or somewhere in this video. And we're going to help you take that next step. We're going to help you with your forehand. There are three myths of the forehand that I absolutely want you to avoid. And you don't want to be making these mistakes. If you can develop your forehand into a weapon, you can take your game to the next level. So go ahead and click below or somewhere inside this lesson. We're going to help you take that next step. I'm passionate about helping you. My name is Jeff Salzenstein once again. And thanks for taking the time to watch this lesson today.